Guys, please complete 5,000 likes and subscribe to support the channel. Please, it will help me create more videos. Now let's begin. In this world, everyone is born with a rank of stars, one star being the lowest and seven stars being the highest. For Misha, her dickhead father and bitch mother left her to die because she was a zero-star tamer. But her life changed after she tamed an F-rank slime, which was actually an SS-rank slime in disguise. The story begins with this dickhead carving a doll. As he hears a baby cry, he happily goes inside his house, where the maid informs him that he has a healthy girl. He and his bitch wife are very happy, and they decide to name her Femisha. She likes her name and giggles. Time passes quickly, and four years go by. Femisha's father is building their new house when she brings him food. They have their meal together with her big brother. While eating, Femisha chokes on her bread, and her father uses magic to summon water for her to drink. Her brother tells Femisha to eat slowly, but she cheekily replies that she has to eat more or her melons won't grow, which makes her father laugh. At night when she returned home, her mother welcomed her with a warm smile and she went to set the table. Her brother tauntingly said she shouldn't be such a loser, that she needed to learn using everyday magic. Her mother defended her, saying there was no need to rush as everyone learns at their own pace. This made her big sister jealous, and she complained that this was not how she was treated when she was a kid, adding that the youngest always get special treatment. Despite this, she was a very happy kid and everyone loved her. Then the decisive day came. She went to the church to test her skills once she turned five years old. The Pope, after using his skill, revealed that Femisha had the class of a tamer. However, when he tried to check her stars, it was revealed she had zero stars. Seeing this, the Pope gave Femisha a disgusting stare, saying she was disgusting, and left. Confused about what to do, she went home. Her father was furious, saying he and his wife had stars, as did each of their children, so how could Femisha be born starless? He was so furious he even broke her favorite toy, which he had made himself. Femisha's mother tried to calm him down only to get scolded heavily, with him saying he didn't think Femisha was even his child. This left her crying. When Femisha tried to calm her mother down, her brother grabbed her hand and started dragging her. She tried to call her big sister, but she also turned her head and gave a disgusting glare. Her brother beat her and threw her outside the house, telling her to get out of their sight. But the harassment didn't stop there. As she went outside, the news of her being Zero Star spread throughout the village, and everyone started to criticize her, saying she didn't deserve to live. Kids started throwing rocks at her, making her bleed, which made her run out of the village crying in pain. Without having any home to return to, she wandered in the forest for hours, even in heavy rain. Then she found a cave where she took shelter and tried to light a fire using fire magic, but she failed. After trying a few times, her vision blurred and she fainted. After a while, as she opened her eyes, she was greeted by the old hag. She was a one-star fortune-telling skill, the village's oldest and most respected person. She was here because she knew Femisha would end up like this, as she saw it in her vision when she visited Femisha when she was two years old. She was the one who gave her the love of a mother, taught her everything about this world, how to read and write, all about basic survival even gave her a magic third-dimensional bag and a magic book where one can find everything about this world. But then the old hag stopped visiting her for a few days, which made Femisha worried, so she went back to the village to check what happened. Her whole world turned upside down when she heard the old hag died. But this was not the end. Everyone in the village started to blame Femisha for the death of the old hag, saying she was cursed, but it didn't end there. Even her own father said to the village chief that the starless shouldn't be allowed to exist in this world and she should die. This was enough to break every fiber of her mentality. After then, the village chief gathered everyone and explained the situation, and everyone went to find and kill Femisha. And from that day, she went on her own journey of hiding and fleeing from the skills she learned. After that, in the jungle, she hung several cooking utensils in trees so that she would know if anyone came near her area. To make a living, she used to go to the dumping ground every day to find anything useful. From there, she picked up used, expired potions, cooking utensils, and other used clothes. But one day, while she was picking garbage, some men came to that area. She got scared and hid beside the bin, and found out they were tamers, and the slimes were eating the garbage. They were saying they had to find Femisha very soon, as she had short legs so she couldn't have gone far. She once again started running for her life. And while running, she found a beautiful pond and decided to take a good bath as she hadn't bathed for many days. She took all her clothes off, took a good dive, and enjoyed the cold water. Then as she was sitting, wait, what angle is this? What the f***? I know what you're thinking, you dirty minders. Sitting all soaked up, she decided to cut her hair and dress like a boy. 
As she didn't have big melons, this would be possible. She decided to go with the name Ivy. It is the name of a plant which grows back even after being stepped on over and over. After that, she once again started to move forward, and on her way, she came to a green field. There, she heard a mysterious sound and stopped. At first, she thought the sound came from a water droplet, but after close inspection, she realized it was a small, cute little slime monster. Curious, she immediately took her book and started searching about it. But even after searching for a while, she didn't find out anything and thought maybe this slime was not recorded. But then she found it. It was written that this slime had no name and was called the weakest slime. Reading this, she thought this slime was the same as her, the weakest of their race. Just then, a light gust of wind blew. The little slime bounced on three grass leaves with rolling eyes and fell on the ground. Ivy realized this slime was really weak. Then she continued to read, realizing this slime was so weak that it could disappear with just a poke and even if the wind blew too hard, it would disappear. Realizing how weak the slime really was, she got worried and thought if she tried to pick the slime from the ground, would it disappear? She decided to pick the slime, who was upside down, to correct his position. She gently corrected its position and continued to read the book. It was written that the lifespan of the slime was recorded to be a maximum of one day. As the lifespan is so small, the ability and origin are still unknown. Just then, a strong gust of wind blew, and it blew the slime further. This startled Ivy. She immediately ran to save her, and as the slime was about to fall into the river, Ivy barely saved it. The slime was very happy. After saving the slime, she placed it on the ground and wondered if, left alone, the slime would definitely die with just a little gust of wind. So she decided to spend the night with it, saying she would stay awake the entire night and guard the slime so that it could live more than 24 hours. But at night, she fell asleep. The morning came, and as she opened her eyes, she panicked as the slime was nowhere to be found. She searched everywhere and started crying, saying she, for once, started not feeling lonely, but now she was lonely again. However, she somehow pulled herself together and decided to move forward. Then she brought out a world map that she had found in the garbage. But to her surprise, as she unpacked the map, the slime was sleeping inside it. Seeing it, she got really happy, saying that everything written in the book was a lie, as the slime was alive even after one day. Then she opened the book to learn how to tame a monster. She first started chanting everything written in the book and placed her hand on the slime's head. The slime started shining, meaning the taming was going smoothly. The book said to give the slime a name. She, after observing the slime's blue color, decided to give it the name Sora, meaning blue sky. After a while, a blue magic crystal appeared on the slime's head, and the taming was successful. She gently held the slime in her hand, saying they both are the weakest, and she is very happy to have the slime by her side. But is that slime really the weakest? We will find out. After that, she laid a trap to catch a mountain mouse and was successful. Then, she carefully butchered the rat and gently packed it onto a banana leaf, which the old hag had taught her, and placed it in her bag. After that, she took out her map, saying the old hag had told her to go to the capital. But the capital was so far that it was not even recorded on this map. So, she decided to go near a village close to the capital and get a new map of the capital. Just then, a gust of wind once again blew Sora. But Ivy caught her in time and wondered if Sora would ever grow stronger because there was no information available, as Sora was so rare. Just then, she noticed a noise which scared her, and she started running. While running, a tree branch scratched her cheek, but she continued to run. Inside the forest, she climbed onto a tree. We see a swarm of giant ants followed with red, deadly eyes. They glared at the scared Ivy, but the ants couldn't climb trees, so Ivy was safe. She read about this in the book the witch gave her, which once again saved her life. As the ants left, relieved Ivy took Sora out but was surprised, thinking Sora seemed to have gotten a little heavier and bigger, but she thought she must be imagining it. She took out expired blue potions. She used multiple potions because they were expired. And finally, after using five bottles, her wound healed. But she was confused, as she had more than five potions and wondered if she dropped them somewhere. And Sora just bounced like he did nothing. After that, Ivy followed the raw road to reach the village, but on her way, she noticed something. There were wanted posters of her everywhere. She couldn't believe her father went that far just to kill her. But she said she is Ivy, not Femisha, so not to worry. With that, she continued to move forward, and finally, after a tough journey, she reached the village. As she entered the village, she noticed everyone was using magic, even for basic tasks, from water to clean clothes to create fire to break bread, and she got sad thinking she can't even use basic magic for everyday use. 
As she walked forward, she noticed a bakery and got hungry because it had been months since she ate any bread. But because she had no money, she couldn't buy it. Then she noticed a butchery store and thought of selling the mountain rat. But she was hesitant of getting caught that she is Famisha. She circled the store multiple times when the store owner noticed and shouted, addressing Ivy as a boy, asking what he needed. This eased Ivy's worry, and she explained she was here to sell something. The owner immediately recognized she had mountain rats to sell because he had a two-star smelling skill, and Ivy got impressed. Then she showed him the mountain rat, which impressed the store owner. He complimented her on how beautifully she butchered the rat and kept it fresh, and asked if she had a high-level butchery skill, but Ivy kept silent. Then the owner gave Ivy ten bronze coins in return for ten mountain mice, and jokingly said the ten bronze coins were like ten million gold coin. Ivy, so innocent, thought she really received ten million gold. Then she happily went to the bakery store to buy her favorite bread, and when paying, she gave two bronze coins, saying, here are two million gold coins, and asked if this would be enough. This made the store owner laugh into tears because of how innocent and pure-hearted Ivy was. Then, she happily sat on a tree to enjoy her bread. She gave half of her bread to Sora and started eating. She noticed Sora was not eating. Normal slimes only eat organic things, but Sora was different. The weird thing was a tamer, and their tamed monster can communicate. But Ivy, even after trying, couldn't, so she thought since she was a zero star, she might not be able to. The next day, she once again caught many mountain rats and was happy to sell them and buy bread. When she noticed a dumping ground, she happily ran to find something useful. There, she noticed a pile of potions. She picked up a blue expired potion whose color turned black and was giving off a foul smell, but she decided to keep it saying it might come in useful. Then she started to arrange the red, green, and blue potion separately, and Sora watched her with greedy eyes. Then suddenly, Sora jumped on the potions and started absorbing them. This startled Ivy, and she wondered if Sora could absorb inorganic things, but only high-ranked slimes can do that. Curious, she gave Sora a pot, but he refused to absorb it. Thinking Sora only liked potions, she gave Sora a green and red potion, but he didn't like them. Then she presented a blue potion, and Sora happily absorbed it. One by one, Sora started absorbing all the blue potions, which made Ivy shout not to eat all the blue potions. After that, her days went very peacefully. She used to sell all her meat to the butcher, and from that money, she bought bread and enjoyed it with Sora. She was very happy and wanted this moment to last forever. She said the villagers were all very kind, but she got worried, thinking they might also try to kill her if they find out she was a zero-star trash. However, she dismissed her thoughts and started enjoying her bread. Then, the next day, as she entered the village, she saw the men who were tasked to bring her to the village by the village chief. She got terrified, and the men, seeing Ivy's magic bag, jokingly asked what was inside that bag, and said Ivy to show them what was inside, which scared her to death. She ran, thinking, did they find out she is Femicia? While running, she passed through the butchery shop, and the owner stopped her, asking if she had any mountain mice. But before she could answer, she saw her poster on the man's store, which again scared her, and she ran without saying anything, confusing the store owner. Running, she came to the bakery store, and the woman stopped her, saying today she freshly baked her favorite sweet bread, and she baked a little too much, so she wanted to give her some for free. Ivy was in a hurry but stopped, but here, also her poster was present on her store, which panicked her, and she ran from there. Running for the entire day, she was now sitting on top of a tree, crying, saying this was such a nice village. Everyone was so nice to her, and now she has to leave this village. She took Sora out, hugged her, and started crying, asking if there was even a place for someone like her in the world. She spent the entire night crying on the tree, hugging Sora. The next day, with new determination, she started walking toward the capital through the jungle to not get caught by the guard. She was very hungry and regretted not taking the bread from the bakery lady. But then she heard the sound of water, and as she followed the sound, she found a river, meaning now she had water. Then she smelled a sweet smell, and to her surprise, there was a tree with juicy fruits in it. She got happy and started moving to pick some fruit, but Sora, for some reason, started shaking, trying to say something to her but she thought Sora was also hungry. But as she came close to the tree, she got terrified. There was a decomposed man's hand popping out from the tree. Then the tree opened its mouth and there was a dead, rotten man's body. She realized it was a tree monster in disguise. Then the tree threw the man out of its mouth and attacked Ivy with its branches. But Sora pushed her back and saved her from dying on the spot. 
although she got injured on her hand. Ivy picked Sora up and started running with all her might. Fortunately, she successfully ran away from the tree, but didn't realize her hand was injured. Her vision got blurry, and as she felt sharp pain, she realized her hand was bleeding heavily. She fell on the ground in pain. She thought of using a potion, but realized she fed all the blue healing potions to Sora. She was dying, bleeding heavily, when Sora suddenly jumped on her wounded hand. Seeing this, Ivy thought slimes are also monsters, and Sora was going to eat her now that she was dying. But she was happy. She didn't mind if it was Sora who eats her. But was Sora really eating her? As her eyes opened, it was already night. She noticed Sora was still foaming at her hand and thought she was an abandoned kid, so she didn't mind getting eaten by Sora, whom she loves. But in the morning, she got woken up by Sora. She realized Sora had healed her hand and Sora was not trying to eat her. She was shocked when Sora, with a warm smile, said, Poo Poo, indicating Sora had indeed saved her. Ivy couldn't believe Sora just talked with her. Only high-level holy beasts who use healing magic can do that. How did Sora heal her? But Sora would only say those two words, Poo Poo. This was one of the happiest moments of her life. She got a precious little family member. The next day, in a treehouse, Sora was having lunch with Ivy. She was eating wild berries while Sora was consuming blue potions. Ivy noticed that Sora was jumping and had gotten taller. She wondered how Sora, who was so fragile and weak before, had grown so much. But Sora jumped and continued to consume potions. Ivy sighed it didn't matter as long as Sora was healthy and growing. Ivy wanted to eat meat, but she couldn't cook it in the forest, as wild monsters might be attracted to the smell. When Sora's voice took her attention, Sora had already finished all her potions, and Ivy didn't have any. She wondered what to do next. Then she found a dumping ground and happily started to search for goods. There she found a sack of old clothes and got happy, saying she needed a new pair of clothes. But Sora was angry, saying he wanted food. Ivy found a box full of potions, and she started to separate blue, red, and green potion. She gave Sora a blue expired potion, and to her surprise, Sora happily ate it. Then Sora also ate a red potion, which cures illness, which surprised Ivy. Curious, Ivy gave Sora a green and a purple potion, but he didn't eat them. Sora mixed the blue and red potions, making purple, and Sora happily ate it. However, he refused to eat the purple potion, which removes curses. She realized it was not about the color. After collecting all the items, Ivy went out to find a good location. She found a raspberry plant, and she happily picked some. She tried to feed Sora some, but he refused to eat. Then, at lunchtime, Sora and Ivy had a heartwarming lunch, but Sora was just devouring all the potions. Ivy panicked, saying that at this rate, Sora would eat everything, and nothing would be left for tomorrow. At night, she lay on a huge tree trunk and started telling the story her mom used to tell her to Sora. A very long time ago, many mages who could see the future predicted the world would end, and the only one who would protect the world was a kid reincarnated from another world with very, very powerful magic. A magic out of this world that no one can use, a forgotten magic that doesn't exist anywhere. It is vast, scary, quite lonely, but suddenly, she stopped her story as she fell asleep. Then, as she got woken up by Sora and realized she slept while telling the story, she wondered why she always feels sleepy when thinking about the story. She had never heard the end of that story from her mom. But then, she realized Sora had just eaten each and every blue and red potion and shouted, saying, Now what will she feed Sora the, the entire day? After a while, we see Ivy made a trap to catch a mountain mouse, and as the rope was pulled up, Ivy realized a mouse might have been trapped. But to her surprise, instead of a mouse, there was a deadly venomous snake monster. She had read about this snake. It was so venomous that just a single bite was enough to kill her instantly. Scared, she picked up a large, thick cloth and somehow caught the snake and started heading toward the village to sell it. But while traveling, Sora suddenly started to shake, saying, there is danger. Ivy got alert and she went deep into the forest to investigate. She got devastated when she saw a horse and many men dead, all covered in their spicy tomato sauce. It was too much for young Ivy and she ran from there immediately. She continued to run, panicked and without even knowing it, she reached near the village. She said she needed to inform the village chief about this. As she entered the town, the only thing that came to her mind was to inform the village about the incident. That's when she saw the signboard of the town hall. Scared, she entered the town hall, wondering what would happen if someone found out she was Femicia. With a trembling voice, she said she saw a cart on fire, and there were people who were attacked by monsters and didn't survive. This shocked everyone, and a man in armor came toward Ivy with a serious face, asking if she was sure it was monsters and not some bandits. 
panicked, Ivy explained that the horses were killed and the people had claw marks on them. If it were bandits, they would have stolen the horses, not killed them. The knight realized the dire situation and ordered everyone to come with him. Before going, the knight thanked Ivy, saying that if her information proved correct, she would receive the tip reward. Ivy asked what a tip reward was, and the receptionist explained that it was a reward for giving valuable information. She gave Ivy a form, saying to return in the evening, and if her information was correct, she could collect the reward by filling out the form. Ivy hesitantly thanked them and left. She went to a store that the town hall recommend to sell the snake. The owner, after examining it, told her it was a very rare female mountain snake, and for this, he could give her three silver coin. This surprised her as she did the math which you are not got at, and realized one silver coin is equal to 30 bronze coin, meaning she had just earned 90 field mice worth of money. While she was thinking, the store owner asked if she was not happy with the money, but in reality, she was too shocked, couldn't believe she earned so much money. The store owner gave her three silver coins, saying if she finds more rare snakes, she can bring them to him. She left the store happily, thinking that now she can eat meat with this money, and said she would go to find food for Sora. Then she went to the village dumping ground, and it was a large one. There she found a pile of old, worn-out magic bags and happily collected them. As she was thinking about what to do with them, Sora was happily devouring the potions. Ivy wanted to take all the bags, but she couldn't walk with all of them. Then an idea came to her mind. She tried to put one magic bag into another and it worked. But when she tried to put that magic bag into another one, it didn't work. Finally, after reeking her brain, she found out there were a total of four types of magic bags. First, where no magic bag fits into one another. Second, only one magic bag fits inside another. And third, where three and fourth, where on one magic bag, four magic bags can be put. So she put one. What the fuck? I don't know the math. She somehow managed to take all the bags, which I don't know what she will do. I am done here. But Sora, well, she continued to devour the potions. Finally, after she took all the magic back, she went to pick up the potions. After that, she went toward the town. There, she saw a crowd gathered and panicked, lifting her hoodie, thinking her poster might be posted like in the previous village. Then suddenly, the knight called her, saying the info she gave saved all of the villagers. There was an ogre king preparing to attack the village. After they tracked the footprints, they found out there is an ogre king and everyone is gathered to hunt it down. He instructed Ivy not to go out of the village as it will be very dangerous and told her to collect her reward from the town hall. As she reached the town hall, the receptionist asked, Did Ivy had the form she gave at morning? She said yes, and one by one started to take out all her magic bags, ultimately making a pile of bags that surprised the receptionist. But she found the form at last, and in return, she received one silver tablet, equal to five silver coin for the info on five dead people, and two gold coins for the info on ogres. This shocked Ivy to her core. She again did her math, thinking one gold coin is worth ten silver coin, which is worth one hundred field mice. So in total, she earned 25 times the money of field mice. She couldn't believe it. The amount was so large. The receptionist told her not to lose the money, and she hesitantly took the money. As she was walking, she saw everyone glaring at her. She thought they found out she was Femisha, but they were looking because Ivy was carrying too many magic bags, which embarrassed her to death. The next day, Ivy went to the forest to catch some field mice, but someone broke her trap. Just then, Sora started sensing something, and by following Sora's direction, Ivy reached near a bush. There, she smelled blood and got a little scared. Behind the bush, she found an injured black panther-like monster, barely alive. She took her magic book out and read, This is a rare SS rank ultra rare monster, and very furious in nature. The panther tried to attack Ivy, but it was so weak that it fainted. Ivy realized the monster was on the verge of dying and got sad, saying she would stay right beside him. She started patting him, really wanting to help him but not knowing how, and got even more sad. Seeing Ivy sad, Sora jumped high and expanded, covering the panther. At first, Ivy thought Sora was eating him, but after seeing the panther getting healed, she realized just like her, Sora is also healing the panther, and wondered what kind of mysterious slime this is. After Sora was done healing the panther, it came close to Ivy, scaring her. She thought the panther would attack her, but it started purring and hugging Ivy, trying to say thanks. Sora said in the magic book it was written, Not even five ass rank can make a scratch on this monster, and no one after seeing this beast can survive. Ivy started patting the beast, saying this might not be that legendary beast, 
but Sora's reaction was telling a different story. Then we see the beast following Ivy. She really wanted to tame the beast, but she thought as she was a zero-rank tamer, she can't. But is she really as weak as she thinks? Then saying his fur is really fluffy, she decided to at least give it a name, and she named him Kuro, which means Black Panther in Japanese. He really liked his name, but Ivy didn't know how this name came to her mind. Then Ivy introduced her and Sora to him, and they became good friends. Then Ivy sensed humans and took Sora inside her bag. She really wanted to travel with Kuro, but she thinks it will be dangerous for Kuro to be seen by humans. Then Kuro hugged Ivy and ran inside the forest, saying goodbye. And Ivy wondered, will they ever meet again? Then we see Ivy came near a village. There, after seeing the guard, she got a little scared. Then a stranger startled her, and Sora, for some reason, started hissing toward the man. He then tried to pass the village gate, but the gatekeeper stopped him, asking what brought him to the village. He tried to explain he is here to meet a very old friend, but the guard immediately realized he was lying. So he grabbed the man and with his sword slashed his bag. From his bag, alcohol bottles started to come out. Panicked, the man tried to make excuses, saying he doesn't know how it got into his bag. But the guard grabbed his neck and called his friend, saying he caught an illegal alcohol seller and to lock him up. His friend worriedly asked he knows the man is a criminal, but will it kill him to treat him more humanely? The guard said jokingly, okay, he will throw a party for him. His friend left, saying it's no use talking to him. Seeing this, Ivy wondered if Sora knew this man was a bad guy. But more importantly, that guard really was scary as hell for Ivy. Now she can't go back, as it will be suspicious in the guard's eyes. So, nervous, she tried to pass the guard, but he stopped Ivy and asked why he didn't see her in the village and asked where she came from. As he was asking, the guard was looking like a gatekeeper of hell, and Ivy got silent in fear. Just then, a mantis landed on the guard's shoulder and Ivy said there is a bug on his shoulder. He started to shoo the bug, which made the situation a little lighter. Then, the guard thanked Ivy, and Ivy started walking. But the guard stopped her again, saying he didn't give her permission to leave. Then, nervous, Ivy said she came from Latomi Village. As soon as the guard heard the village name, he got shocked and said he heard Latomi Village was not doing great, but he can't believe they were sending kids away to save food. Then, to cheer Ivy up, he said Ivy should become an adventurer. It will be tough, but she will never sleep hungry. Then the guard patted Ivy, said to take care, and Ivy was thinking, did something happen to her village? As Ivy walked inside the village, she was amazed at how big it was. Then she went toward a butchery store and asked if she caught field mice. Could she sell them there? The store owner, surprised, asked if Ivy was catching them herself, and Ivy said yes. The store owner said she would buy them only if the meat was kept fresh. But then she also warned Ivy not to sleep in the forest as there was a vicious monster scene. Ivy thanked the owner and after buying cheap dried meat, she left, thinking about where she would be sleeping tonight. Then she noticed a big camp inside the village and she couldn't believe how big the camp was. At the camp's entrance, Ivy noticed yet another scary guard and nervously tried to enter the camp when the guard stopped her. The guard asked if Ivy was alone, and she said yes. The guard, without asking anything, gave Ivy a wooden pass, saying not to lose it. Ivy asked how much she had to pay, and the guard, with a tired voice, said there was no need to pay, just to go and be safe. Then Ivy finally entered the camp and said she got scared for no reason, but wondered why all the guards were so scary. Then she went into a corner and took out an old cloth, spreading it on the ground and laying on it, saying it was perfect. Then she noticed some very fancy tents and camps, saying their high-level adventurers must be living there. And behind her, small tents were there, saying their novice adventurers must be living. She really wanted to live outside in a tent, so she decided to buy a tent for herself. She went inside the village and in front of a store started thinking, can she really afford a tent when a voice scared her? She screamed and started crying, and it was none other than the guard. His friend said, didn't he tell him his face is really scary? See, he scared the poor kid, and he politely apologized. Then he asked what Ivy was doing here, and she explained she is here to buy a tent. This shocked them, saying they can't believe Latomi Village sent the poor kid without even a tent. Then he introduced himself as Octo, his friend as Veli Berra, and excitedly grabbed Ivy's hand, saying he will take her to a great shop without realizing he was hurting her. After getting scolded by Velibera, Octo once again apologized, and Velibera explained Octo is not a bad guy, he just gets excited whenever he sees cute kids, and Ivy said it's okay. 
Then Octo and his friend came into an old man's store, and the old man started insulting him, saying why he is here, he is not going to sell anything to him. But Octo said he is not the one buying and introduced Ivy to the old man. When the old man heard Ivy was from Latomi, he also got mad, saying how can they leave the poor kid alone? Then Octo said to the old man to take out the best tent at the lowest price. The old man said Octo to shut up and started searching for a tent. He asked Ivy what her budget is, and she explained she is not sure, but she can go with five silver. She also has two gold, which she wants to save. Hearing this, everyone got shocked, asking how in the God's name she has so much money, and panicked. She explained she got it as a reward for reporting people getting attacked by monsters. Octo said if the amount was this big, meaning the monster was quite high level. Then the old man took out a small premium tent, saying an adventurer sold it to him. It was almost new, and this was only a one-time deal. She can't come and ask for the same tent for five silvers. She realized this tent was really light, and the old man said for Ivy to write her name as a mark. She happily wrote Sora in Japanese. Everyone thought it was a weird symbol, but Sora, for some reason, was able to read this letter. Then the old man, as a gift, gave Sora a magic money pouch saying it was risky for her to roam with so much money. Ivy thanked the old man, and outside, she also thanked both the guards, and they said to Ivy if she needs anything, she can come directly to them. Then she came to the camp and immediately started setting her camp, and in no time, she prepared the tent. She happily went inside the tent and took sleepy Sora. Sora also was very happy, and Ivy was really, really happy. Her dream of living inside a tent finally got true. It was all thanks to the kind people she met, and then she wondered, will they also dislike her when they knew she is a trashy zero star? Does she really deserve all this? Outside, some trash from different mothers observing the costly tent, and a naive kid and smiled wickedly. They ganged up on Ivy, calling her a thief. Then this cactus-haired guy with his Oscar-winning acting said this was his tent and accused Ivy of stealing it. Ivy asked if they are the previous owner, and even if they are, she really bought it with her own money. Hearing this, the muscle head grabbed Ivy from her collar, pulled her high, started shouting, saying there is no way a poor kid like him can afford a tent like this. Then they started bullying her, even bad-mouthing her parents. Ivy started crying, and Sora, on the other hand, was getting furious. But before Sora could do anything, the gatekeeper came asking why they are making a commotion here. The muscle head shouted, This poor kid stole their tent, and they're just taking back what is theirs. The gatekeeper asked, Can they prove they are the original owner? The muscle head holding Ivy more brutally said, Can he see? How can this poor kid even afford this tent? This was all the proof. Ivy was very scared when the gatekeeper grabbed the muscle head's hand, releasing Ivy. He said he knew this tent was not there, as Captain Octo himself bought that tent for this kid. He asked again if this tent was indeed theirs. Now they were all covered in sweat, trying to say, On second thought, this tent only looks similar and is not theirs. While saying this, they tried to run, and the gatekeeper with the other guards caught them. Then Ivy thanked the gatekeeper, and he explained that Captain Octo told him to help Ivy, but he didn't expect things to turn like this on his watch. So he gave Ivy a brand new blue potion, saying to be safe with a shy face. Sora was really happy. At night, Ivy prepared many blue and red potions for Sora, but Sora's attention was only focused on the brand new blue potion. Ivy explained he can't have that one. It was very precious and could even save her life. But Sora started making a cute face, and Ivy didn't know how to reject this cute face. The next day, it was a very nice sunny day, so Ivy decided to go for a hunt, and Sora replied, Poo Poo, in reply. Then something strange happened. While walking one by one, the guards with warm smiles started to stop Ivy and greet her by calling her name. Some even gave her some berries to eat. This made Ivy worried, thinking how everyone knows her name. But her worries didn't stop there. All her traps in the forest seemed to be broken by some big animal monsters. At this rate, she might starve to death. But then she sensed something familiar, magic. And behind her, it was Kuro holding a bunch of rabbit. Slowly, Kuro kept the rabbits in front of Ivy, surprising her. She asked if all these were for her, and Kuro said yes, making Ivy very happy, and she hugged Kuro. Ivy counted, and it was nine rabbits without any scratches on them. Ivy was surprised, thinking how did Kuro catch them? Then Ivy started butchering all the rabbits, and behind her, Kuro was playing with Sora like a ball. Finally, after the butchering was done, Ivy grabbed the sleeping Sora, and Ivy thanked Kuro for everything. After giving Ivy a warm hug, Kuro ran into the forest. Ivy, while returning, wondered Sora was so fragile that just a poke was enough to kill him. But now, he seems strong somehow. 
and wondered why. Once a monster is tamed, they don't grow stronger. So how and what was happening? She was confused. At the village, Ivy gave the meat to the old woman and she got surprised, saying the meat is really fresh and nicely butchered. She asked if Ivy has four or five star hunting and butchering skills, which made Ivy nervous and she didn't answer. The owner thought she is indeed a high-level adventurer and gave Ivy 95 silver coins. Ivy somehow dodged the question about her skills and left, saying it was all thanks to Kuro that she would not starve to death. But once again, one by one, all the guards started to greet Ivy with a warm smile, saying if she needs any help, she can tell them. Now this creeped her out, and while hiding behind a box, worried, she said, how does everyone know her name? Just then, Veli Bera came from behind, asking why Ivy is hiding. After explaining everything, Veli Bera sighed, saying he knew Octo was likes cute kids, but he didn't expect he would go to this extent. He explained Captain Octo just wanted Ivy to be safe, so he requested all the guards to keep an eye on her and help her if she was in need. He explained Octo might be a lolicon, but he is a nice guy. This made Ivy feel a little happy, and Veli Bera apologized to Ivy, saying if it caused her any trouble, he is really sorry. Ivy said it's okay. And after Velibera left, Ivy said she really appreciated Octo for helping her, but she really doesn't like to stand out like this. But after seeing everyone treating her kindly, she really felt warm and happy after a very long time. Just then, in a fruit store, she noticed her village's fruit, Zaro, and it was too expensive. The owner, seeing her reaction, asked if she was from Latomi Village because only in Latomi Village this fruit is grown. But this year, due to bad harvesting, there is a shortage of this fruit, which is why the price is so high. Ivy said she is from Latomi, and when asked where her parents are, she, a little panicked, said she is traveling alone. Hearing this made the owner mad, and he started cursing the village chief, blaming him for the downfall of Latomi. This surprised Ivy, and the owner, thinking she got kicked out of the village, got sad seeing the poor kid and explained that in the village there was a fortune teller, and this Zaro fruit is very special. Its harvesting time changes every year, and even if harvested a single day late, it will rot. Zaro was the only source of income for Latomi, but that king of a dickhead didn't stand seeing the fortune teller popular. So when she was sick, the village head didn't give her medicine, and she died painfully. The worst part was he heard the village head blame all the fault on an eight-year-old innocent kid. This made Ivy really, really sad and angry. The store owner continued, saying now that their only source of income is cut off, and the king of a dickhead was chasing kids and old people who can't work outside the village and asked, is Ivy also one of them? But she remained silent, and seeing Ivy sad, the owner took a Zaro fruit out and gave it to Ivy, saying this one was overripe and no one will buy it, so she can take it, which lightened her mood, and she thanked the owner. At her tent, she was worried, thinking she didn't know so much happened at the village, and wondered how her dickhead father, bitch mother, sucker brother, and sister were doing. Once again, she started to feel sad, saying she wanted to live a happy life with her family. But then, after noticing Sora trying to lighten the mood, her mood lightened and she said, Now that she think, in her journey, she really met some really good people. She met Sora, Kuro, Octo, and Veli Bera, who is really kind to her, and everyone in this village is really kind to her. While taking a bite of Zaro, its flavor reminded her of her village, and she remembered what the fortune teller told her. She said to go to the royal capital. However, she must mind people whom she can't trust, and when she does, she must tell everything about her to them. After that, her life was going smoothly. Every day, all the guards used to greet and help her, and in the jungle, after catching field mice, she was making a good living. But one day, while returning, she sensed a sharp killing intent and it was none other than the ugly bastard and her virgin girlfriend. With a smirking smile, he approached Ivy, shouting at her, saying all because of her, his friends got arrested, and for that, now she has to pay. Then the ugly bastard said, he noticed a weird slime back then and said if they sell it, they will make a fortune. Hearing this, Ivy ran with all her might, but the ugly bastard, while trying to catch her, fell under Ivy's trap, making him furious. Now he just wanted to kill Ivy with his own sword, and Ivy continued to run. But the virgin girlfriend instantly appeared in front of her, saying she has three-star sprinting skill and she can't escape with her. The ugly bastard also caught up and grabbed Ivy from her collar, asking to hand over the slime. But when Ivy resisted, his girlfriend grabbed Ivy's other hand and was ready to punch her in the stomach. She noticed something horrifying. And when both of them turned back, they got scared to death, saying, What is a Dandala doing here? 
They immediately left Ivy and Kuro while he was just glaring at them furiously. As Kuro furiously came close to them, she got so scared that she fainted after peeing her pants. The ugly bastard, using his four-star sprinting skill, tried to run, but Kuro caught up with him in no time, and just a growl was enough to knock him out cold. Then Kuro dragged his body and threw it on top of his girlfriend, and now Ivy realized Kuro was not an ordinary panther. He was indeed the legendary SS rank beast. She read a dandala was a ferocious beast, but Kuro didn't seem to be. Just then Ivy sensed humans coming, and after thanking Kuro, Kuro ran into the forest. From behind, Captain Octo and Velibera came, and with concern, asked if she is all right, if she's hurt anywhere, and said they heard people screaming and beasts growling while patrolling. Ivy explained everything, excluding Kuro's part. The next day, Captain Octo called Ivy, saying the ugly bastard Ivy caught was a wanted murderer, and for that, she will get a reward from the guild. Ivy will get two gold coins and three silver coins. This once again surprised her, and she did her maths, thinking one field mouse is equal to one bronze coin, and one gold coin is equal to 1,000 field mice, so she just earned 2,300 field worth of money. And the money she got from the previous village all totaled, she has 5,100 field mouse worth of money. Then Octo interrupted her thought, asking now that she has so much money. Does she have an account? as holding such a large amount of money is very risky. This confused her, so Octo took Ivy inside the guild to open her a bank account, saying he will become her guardian at opening her account. The receptionist explained all she has to do is to give one drop of her blood, and as she did, all her info appeared on a screen. Octo read the info where her name and everything was written, except her stars, and he got surprised, seeing she is eight years and eleven months old. He thought Ivy was six years old. This man is a legit lolicon, I'm telling you. Then Ivy deposited all her money, and in return, she received a badge which would record all her transactions and using which she can't take the money out in any guild in any village. Then suddenly the words deposit book and ATM came to her mind, and she wondered what those were. But just then, Veli Bera Furious came and started scolding Octo like his wife, saying he was searching for him the entire village, and here he was, leaving all his work onto his subordinate. This made Octo nervous, and they started fighting like husband and wife, leaving Ivy in an awkward position. After the situation got lighter, Octo took Ivy to the most famous street food store in that village, and the shopkeeper, seeing Ivy, Veli Bera, and Octo together, asked if Ivy was their secret kid, and Octo jokingly replied yes and asked, Isn't Ivy the cutest? Making Ivy a little awkward. As they sat at the table, she presented her special dish, Sikh kebab. Ivy just had dried meat, bread, and berries, and she was really happy to finally eat something good. As she took a bite, she couldn't believe it was so delicious. The meat just melted in her mouth. Velibera explained it was delicious because the shopkeeper has a four-star cooking skill. This once again made her sad. Then Captain Octo, curious, asked Ivy what her skill was as he never got the chance to ask. She was still very tense, and hesitantly she replied, she is a tamer. Octo said a tamer is a really good skill, and if in the future she wants to join the knights, he can tell them, because a tamer is really suitable for this task. Then they asked how many stars does she have, which made her more scared. The boys noticed this and changed the topic, thinking Ivy is a one star and is embarrassed to say it, saying who cares how many stars one has. Even a four star can become a criminal, and even a one star can achieve many things. The next day, Ivy was ready to leave the village. Octo said if she wanted, she can live in the village. Although Ivy wanted, she can't. She explained how she wanted to go to the royal capital to fulfill the will of the fortune teller. Octo said if anyone bullies her, just tell them the name, Octo, saying she is his friend and she can go wherever she wants. Ivy said thank you and she left. After she left, the situation got tense. When they checked the list of names of Latomi Village, there was no kid named Ivy. The closest one was someone called Femicia, a girl who ran alone. This made Octo sad. He said, did Ivy really not trust him that she had to lie? But Veli Bera said something horrible might have happened to Ivy. That's why she doesn't trust anyone. But Octo knew one day Ivy will definitely tell him everything. The next day, we see Sora running excitedly and Ivy chasing him. After a while, we see Ivy drinking water exhausted. She said she can't believe how Sora grew so much stronger. She notices Sora really grew stronger after eating the wound of Kuro and thought, exactly what kind of mysterious slime is Sora? Then, Sora noticed something. And after chasing Sora, Ivy notices the entire field was destroyed. She remembered the warning of the butcher store. The wind boars were rampaging. She thought just how huge a boar have to be to make the land like this. She got scared 
thinking what will happen if she got attacked. Just then, she noticed a sound and thought she is done for. She started screaming, holding Sora, but Sora said, Poo poo! And Ivy realized it was none other than Kuro. Ivy immediately jumped and started hugging and cuddling Kuro. Seeing this, Sora got jealous. Ivy said she also loves Sora. She loves both of them equally. Well, it was really a happy moment for her. At night, Ivy had a feast. She made delicious rabbit barbecue from the rabbit that Kuro caught, and Sora was also eating his fill. But her happy moment was short-lived as, from afar, a mysterious black figure was observing her. The next day, Ivy went to check her traps but found nothing. Just then, she started feeling a wicked and ominous aura. She took Sora into her bag and started to run with all her might, but that wicked aura also started chasing her, slowly reaching closer. Running, Ivy reached near a cliff and finally got a glimpse of the ominous aura. She noticed a woman's shadow slowly walking toward her. She was too scared and shouted for help. Hearing it, Kuro immediately came to her aid. Kuro was furious and gave a menacing growl which created a shockwave, and that mysterious shadow disappeared, and Ivy was left wondering what was that. The next day, we see Ivy and Sora riding Kuro. As they were crossing a cliff, Ivy thanked Kuro for always taking care of her. Kuro even helped her yesterday and now was helping her reach the capital. For that, she was very grateful. But the thought of what was that thing last night was still eating her from inside. Just then, Kuro stopped, surprising Ivy. Well, Kuro stopped because a high-level ogre was climbing to attack them. Sora was in attack mood, but Kuro grabbed them and threw them back, ready to defend them. The ogre also climbed up, and Kuro jumped into the body of the ogre. The ogre was strong, but Kuro was also not weak. Kuro bit the ogre's shoulder, which disbalanced the ogre, and both of them fell from the cliff. Ivy panicked, but before she could do anything, from above, four more ogres were approaching her. She ran with all her might and reached a deserted place. There were many wooden, creepy dolls hanging on the tree, but before she could even process all this, the ogre caught up to her. Ivy panicked and continued to run deep inside the weird, deserted place. While running, she stepped into a small trap. And suddenly, a huge version of the same trap caught Ivy, and the ogres surrounded her, ready to eat her. One ogre humped to finish Ivy, but suddenly, from above, a flame shot hit the ogre, burning him instantly. It landed with fire, covering his entire body, acting like he's some kind of hero. Then with a single spell, he burned all the ogres into ashes. He said he is Latrua, the Flame Emperor. But when he noticed a kid hanging in the trap, all his coolness went inside his ass. He got panic and didn't know how to stop the fire and save the kid. Then another character came with black hair saying, Latrua is really careless, and fired his arrow, saving Ivy. Panicked, Latrua asked what a kid like her was doing here, but before he could finish his sentence, an ogre attacked them. Latrua dodged, holding Ivy, and landed into two bouncy, huge-ass slimes, which were the summon of this woman, Mila. She also jokingly said Latrua can't be free from trouble even for one day and took her slime back inside her ass. Oh, sorry, I mean back inside bag. Then the next Fathers of Ivy, with one blow, finished all the ogres up, killing them brutally without breaking a sweat. At this point, the gang was annoyed, saying, what was the point of making the traps? And Latrua said, at least because of his trap, they saved a kid. And well, Ivy, on the other hand, was too amazed seeing the gang fight like this. Then we see the adventurer group introduced them, saying their squad name was Blazing Sword, and they came to eliminate the ogres. But unfortunately, Ivy got caught up in between, so for that, they apologized. Ivy's question was, are these traps to catch ogres? And Latrua said, yes, they were. But once again, everyone started to joke with Latrua, saying not even a single fly got trapped. Then Ivy's second father worriedly asked, is Ivy okay? Is he hurt anywhere? And panicked. Ivy said he is all okay and thanked them for saving him. Then one by one, everyone introduced themselves. This white-haired guy was Sizalk, the leader. The African guy was Nuga. The cool dude was Shafal. And finally, this was Latrua. And behind him, this big melon woman was Mila. And Ivy also introduced herself, saying her name is Ivy, saying she is from Latomi and is going toward the royal capital. Hearing this, everyone got shocked as how such a small kid is traveling alone in such a dangerous forest. So Sizelk asked Ivy to come with them to spend the night together, as he also likes small kids and gets excited. So Ivy followed them. She felt the same safe feeling she felt from Octo and Valibera. Then they finally reached the camp, which was set up in the middle of the forest as a stopping point for all the adventurers. There Ivy noticed Kuro and got happy, but realizing if the adventurers see Kuro, Kuro might get into danger. 
So with her sign language, she tried to say to Kuro to go inside the forest. But Kuro would hear everything Ivy was thinking. I'm telling you, Ivy already tamed this bad boy and herself don't know. And then Kuro went inside the forest. Then they finally reached the camp and Ivy got surprised seeing everyone. This place was like a mini village where everything from weapons to food was present. Latrua explained that monster repellent was placed everywhere so no monster would come near this place. So this place is safe to spend the night instead of inside the forest. Then they came near their tent and Sizelk showed their tent. And then they started to leave for some hunting, saying if Ivy needed anything, she could say it to Latrua. But Latrua, well, he was just too tensed and stressed, which Ivy also realized. After inquiring, Ivy found out it was because today it was Latrua's turn to cook for food and he is really a terrible cook. He started crying, saying today they might have to sleep empty stomach. Curious, Ivy asked how Latrua usually cooks his food and excited, he explained he has three-star flame skill, so he grills, burns, and roasts the food. And of course, he also adds salt and pepper at last. Well, Ivy also realized today Indeed, they have to sleep empty stomach if Latrua were to cook. So she decided to teach Latrua how to cook. She immediately went to cook. First, she sprinkled some herbs and started kneading the rabbit meat to remove the bad smell of rabbit meat, cut them into small pieces, and pan-fried them perfectly. She, like a master, cut cabbage, made delicious-looking soup, and well. Latrua was just amazed seeing Ivy cook like this. And well, Ivy ended up making the entire dinner herself. At night, at the dining table, a mouth-watering meat and fresh vegetables was laid out, a seven-star feast prepared. Everyone was surprised to see the food and excitedly took a bite. Immediately, tears started to flow from their eyes. Ivy panicked, asking continuously if the food was bad. But everyone, with a thumbs up, said this was the best food they had ever tasted in their entire lives. Their hands didn't stop as they devoured the food like wild beasts. Someone asked if Ivy had a five or even seven-star cooking skill, as they had once tried four-star cooking at the royal palace. But this food was way more amazing than that. Ivy remained silent. Then, Melon also came, smelling the food. After taking a bite, she too was amazed at how delicious it tasted. While enjoying the food, they finally realized that Latrua couldn't cook. So they shouted, asking Latrua if he forced Ivy to cook all the food. He panicked, but Ivy stood up, trying to defend him. She said Latrua didn't say anything. In fact, they made the food together, and Latrua adjusted the heat while she set the mood. Latrua got excited once again, saying manipulating fire was his expertise. Then he fired a fireball, making a mini firework, saying just like this, he could do amazing things with his amazing skill. Seeing this at first, Ivy got surprised, and the word firework, with the info that flame color reacts with different elements, well, some chemistry stuff that you and I don't know came to her mind. She was confused how she knows this. Melon asked Ivy why she is looking so tensed, and Ivy said if she had some copper and metals, she would have a more beautiful flame. Then Melon took out many pieces of different metals from broken armor and swords, and Ivy took some pieces and added a bone piece and some salt for some chemical reaction, and explained some chemistry stuff, which I don't understand at all. She gave the pouch to Latrua and asked to shoot the pouch in the sky. As he did, a huge, beautiful firework was created, leaving everyone amazed and excited. Latrua started launching more fireworks, and everyone at the camp enjoyed this beautiful scene. Then we see Ivy doing the dishes, and Sizelk had to force Ivy to stop working and go to sleep. At the tent, Ivy gave Sora some potion, and said she was surprised to meet those people, but after spending some time with them, they seemed to be very kind people to her. Meanwhile, the boys were a little sad, talking about why a kid is traveling alone, Sizelk was very worried. He saw an anxious look in Ivy's eyes when he told her to stop working and rest. It was like if Ivy was not useful, she would be casted aside. He wondered what kind of life Ivy lived to act like this. Well, Latrua was hearing all this with a serious face, and outside, Kuro was also sleeping, keeping an eye on Ivy. 